So there's two primary functions of a relationship. And I want to get into that in this video, because as I always say, there's a lot of inversion um, on this planet, meaning we are not doing things for the right reason. And it's fine. It's sort of how we've been conditioned. But in order for us to expand our consciousness, we really want to um, deepen our awareness and undo a lot of the programming that has kind of been forced upon us from our parents and you know society etc so if we are not in a relationship for these two reasons it's really you're doing yourself a disservice and it, it's not the um you're not in the relationship for the right reason and i will do another video on this um to explain really what's going on there um in terms of like karmic relationships if that's something you you guys want to hear so one of the main functions of a relationship is expansion. And so we really want to come into relationships whole and complete. We don't need a relationship, right? A relationship should just be a expansion of who we are when we feel our best as a whole and complete individual. So when you're whole and complete, you're not looking for someone else to validate who you are or to make you feel good about yourself, um, to meet your needs, to soothe you. You're not looking for a relationship um, to complete you. You are complete. You are whole and complete. So this is the reason I focus on inner work so much because you can't look for something outside of yourself because you'll never reach this uh, divine partnership or divine union because you need to you need to do your own healing work and you're not going to be able to attract someone that is also whole and complete or find that mutual attraction in a relationship without first being whole and complete. And so if you are struggling to accept yourself, you don't like who you are, you are, you know, you're feeling lonely because we should never really be feeling lonely. When you have yourself, you have your own best interest, you have your own back um, and you have a fulfilling life. And and a fulfilling life doesn't mean you have to have a million friends and you have to go out all the time. In fact, I have a very quiet life and I love being alone. <laughs> like I just love it, right? Because I love my own company and I don't need a lot of noise outside. In fact, um, the more spiritual I become, the more I become aware of myself, my true essence, more and more, the quieter my life becomes because I don't need to hear the opinions of anyone else, or I don't need validation from anyone. And I'm not looking for anything outside of myself to complete me, which is the best space to be in. So we really want to ask ourselves why we're lonely and um, understand that if you're, if you're dating and you're moving into relationships from a place of loneliness, it, this is not the divine purpose of a relationship, right? And so expansion happens when you're in a relationship and you've come into a relationship or you've attracted a relationship from the point of already feeling like super happy and comfortable in your own skin and really your energy. And so if you're a woman, your femininity is, is very present and, and prevalent to the external environment. That means that you're going to be very magnetic to people you know, pets, men, um, and opportunities, experiences, you're, and you're going to feel very good within your own skin, because you're going to be functioning in life from your dominant essence. As a man, you're also going to feel very comfortable on your own, you're going to be you're going to enjoy um, being with your own company, you're not going to need anything outside of yourself to make you feel good, you're not going to be um, indulging in negative vices. So um, a man that is like healthy and empowered is not going to be um how do i say this he's not going to be interested in um you know just meeting multiple women he's not going to be interested in just meeting women for like pleasure he's not going to be interested in porn he's not going to be interested in all that because he's whole and complete within himself and so he doesn't need anything outside of himself to complete him so when we're in this space where we're feeling good in who we are, like on our own, right? We're feeling good on our own. And then we meet someone. What is going to happen is you're going to feel more of yourself, right? You're going to feel more feminine or more masculine, let's say, when you're with this other person that is the opposite gender to you, right? Um, or I guess same gender, but opposite energy since there's a gazillion genders right now. 
Um, I'm just focusing on heterosexual couples, but this is just energy. So if you're predominantly feminine woman, you're going to enjoy being alone. You're going to enjoy your own company. You're going to have a fulfilling life. And oftentimes it's going to be quiet. So the more integrated you are as a man or a woman, the less you're going to need anything outside of yourself. I, I just, this is like really important to um, understand. You're not going to be doing anything um, with the intention, with an egoic intention. You're going to be doing, everything you're going to be doing is going to be an expansion of who you are, right? And so anything that you're doing, so anything that you're chasing outside of yourself, anything that you're chasing outside of yourself or any thing that you're looking for outside of yourself which is approval is not something you're going to be interested in the more whole and the whole, more whole and complete you become so then you're going to meet this person and this per you could, you'll meet this person uh in a in a it could be on a dating app it could be on the street like it doesn't really matter because when you're whole and complete you you attract everything to you and when you're with this person you're going to feel like yourself but more of yourself so it's going to be an expansion of who you are most relationships come come from a space of I don't feel good about myself and so I'm looking for someone else to validate me and give me that which I cannot give myself and so we move under the impression and, and and thought process that oh my god I'm meeting this person and this person is the one but how can that person be the one when you don't consider yourself the one like it can't happen right so this is this is why you cannot date. And I, as a dating coach, even when I'm working privately with women, I never put a woman on a dating app if she's not happy because you can't meet someone that you can't expect to meet a happy individual if you are not happy. It's not fair to put your burdens and your issues on someone else. Like it's just not fair to do that. So you have to work on yourself. That way you, you feel comfortable with yourself. You've dealt with your past trauma. You've dealt with your hurts. You, you've Practice self-inquiry. You've asked yourself questions about why you've, you know, entered into certain relationships in the past, what went wrong, and you're taking personal responsibility for your life. And then you're you make peace with it. And then you move into a relationship. And this is where like the relationship becomes very fulfilling. Now, when you enter a relationship like this, you're just going to feel more expanded. So a feminine woman is going to feel more feminine. You're going to feel completely like yourself. Your defenses are going to be down. You're going to feel very girly. If you're feminine, you'll feel very girly. Femininity is an emotion. Um, I've had many women, um, you know, I've sp spoken to many women lately and, you know, they're very in their head. So femininity is in your, you're in your body, right? It's not up here, right? You're in your body, it's your emotions. And the more you're in your heart, the more you're in your emotions, and you're not functioning from your ego. So you cannot be um, a feminine woman or a masculine man that is functioning primarily from ego. And if, if you read my books, I get into this more, but you can't be right because the feminine and masculine energies are a byproduct of spirit, it's spirit and spirit is all loving. So how can you be in a how can you be in your feminine essence or your masculine essence and ideally in an in integration of that if you're an ego, right? You, you can't. And so as a woman, your femininity is and your energy is going to be your emotions and, you know, your vulnerability, right? That that's what femininity is. It's being able to show up as you are, but also, you know, having this like magnetism around you, which comes when you're, when you've dropped into your heart, your heart is what creates this magnetic field around you. And that is what pulls everything to you. The head doesn't do that. Right. And so when you're with a man, you're going to feel more of yourself. You should experience feeling a level of safety, feeling like, wow, I've met my person. I feel so comfortable around this person. And you should really be able to be completely yourself with this man if it is the right man for you. There should be no um, guessing about how he feels about you. There should be no um, chasing and if this man is really in his healthy masculine, he is going to be able to create a structure for you to feel safe in, meaning that he's not, he's going to be like very aware of what his shortcomings are. And he's going to have worked on that because when a man has not worked on himself, what happens is he can't be a safe space for a woman because because of his past and his trauma, it brings up a lot of his, let's say, darker side and and, you know, he's not going to be able to be in this protective 
space for the woman. In fact, the woman is going to oftentimes have to protect herself from him. Because if a man is showing up defensive, angry, argumentative, if he doesn't know how to protect a woman, and this is huge, right? Oftentimes, it's very difficult for feminine women to find the right man because a man has not worked on himself, right? And and, and just so you know, for men, if you want to be with a feminine woman, you got to work on your shit. Like you can't expect to be with a feminine woman, bring your past trauma into the relationship and expect a woman to just surrender to you if you are consistently showing up in your wounds and patterns because of things that have happened to you. That's not fair. And to think that a woman is going to trust in you and your leadership when you are, you know, not secure as yourself as a masculine man and not appearing in your true essence. So when a man hasn't done his inner work and he hasn't, you know, and, and inner work for a man, you know, just for men that are looking at this video is looking at why you've gotten into bad relationships in the past. If you've been emasculated, if people have taken advantage, looking at yourself and why you've done certain things, forgiving yourself, really forgiving yourself and breaking patterns and ties to people that have been disrespectful to you. And this is why I always say, you know, for me, it's not about who's in your circle or your family or friends or, you know, you have to look at yourself and, and if people are, do not have your best interest in, in mind, and that could also be family, when you don't speak up for yourself and you don't um, have like boundaries or, you know, communicate when something is right or wrong, if you don't do that for yourself as a man, how are you going to protect a woman? Because when there's unhealthy relationships in your life as a man, when you have a woman that enters into that situation, you're also putting, you're subjecting her to those negative relationships. And if they have been negative to you, and, and again, it, when it comes to family, if something negative happens to you in your life and your family um, does not, like, let's say you were with a woman and this woman cheated, and now your family is like communicating with that woman still. That is so wrong. It's not even funny. And men want loyalty, but that's not loyal. And so when when a woman enters the situation and she's, let's say, a good woman and your parents and your sister, your family is, you know, betraying you because that is a betrayal, right? Whatever people want to say, that, that's a betrayal. She's going to likely do that to your new wife. So if you don't know how to set boundaries and communicate what is right and wrong, and you are afraid to rock the boat for whatever reason, because it's always a reason, that's going to impact the woman that you're with. Because the woman that you're with, if she's feminine, those toxic relationships, because they are toxic, are somehow going to leak into the relationship because this is what happens. And if you don't know how to protect yourself and defend yourself, you're not going to be able to defend her. So it's really important for women to also understand that I'm not putting the blame on you and I'm also not putting the blame on men because this is a healthy relationship. It's two people. It's not just one person. There's things going on in the dynamic that are going to affect you, um, but you can't control another person. So you just have to look at yourself as a woman and think to yourself and be the best version of yourself and think to yourself, am I showing up as the best version of myself as a woman in this dynamic? Am I being supported, supportive, loving, et cetera? You, you can't control what anyone else does. But what, I'm, what I want to let you guys know is that in a relationship, if a man is not showing up as a leader, then a woman is not going to feel like herself. She's going to feel very small in the relationship and it's not going to be the correct relationship. So if a, if a relationship is not expanding who you are, that means that you are not feeling more feminine, more safe, more loving, more playful, like more, more of who you are, then it's the wrong relationship. And the same thing with men. So when a man meets a feminine woman, the reason it's she's so unforgettable is because when he's with her, he feels like a man. So he feels more of himself, right? Just as a woman feels more of herself, the man feels more of herself. That means that she's not controlling, you know, she doesn't sweat the small stuff. She's really reasonable. And um, of course, she's not weak. So if, if need be, she knows how to assert herself. And again, if need be, right? If you don't, as a woman, if you don't need to assert yourself, you're not going to assert yourself, right? But she has a backbone. So if need be, she knows how to uh, stand up for herself, even with him, right? And again, 
healthy men want this. Healthy men want to look at a woman and think, wow, this woman has integrity. This woman is strong. This woman is loyal. This woman has boundaries. Like that makes men feel safe, but it also makes women feel safe when she sees that in a man, right? So when a man is with a woman that's in her femininity, it makes them feel more, more like a man. So this is the reason why men feel so pulled to feminine women, because they have those components within themselves. So they have this aspect of love within themselves. If you read my books, I get into this more. But what happens when they're with a feminine woman is not only are they going to expand this aspect of love within themselves because they're going to it's going to awaken their feminine essence because, again, men have a masculine and feminine energy, but it's also going to expand more of who they are. So they're going to feel they're going to feel more like a man when they're with this woman. Right. And again, this is where the synergy is, right? The man's going to feel more like a man. The woman's going to feel more like a woman or more in her feminine. And this is like, if we don't feel this in a relationship, it's the wrong relationship. So if you're in a relationship where you're feeling less, less than. So as a woman, you're feeling constricted. You're not, um, you're not feeling like you can be yourself. Your feelings are being invalidated. You can't share how you feel because the person is always getting upset. You're on tippy toes. The person is not protecting you. The person is not leading. That is not the right relationship if you're a woman in, in, your, in your feminine. So that's something to be aware of. As a man, if you're in a relationship with a woman that is very controlling, she's unhappy, nothing you do is ever good enough, you're always walking on eggshells, you know, she's always getting mad, she's manipulative, she's angry, she controls you. And again, many men have been in relationships like this. So as a man, you have to look at this. And by the way, this is the controlling, unhealthy, toxic woman, right? If you feel not compelled to do something for your woman, but she's forcing it and if she and if you don't if she doesn't get her way um there's going to be like threats or manipulation she has your kids you have a business with her and you're doing things out of fear or any time any sex is doing something to appease another person that's not the right relationship right and what you'll notice as a man is you'll feel smaller so in both scenarios you're going to feel yourself shrinking, right? You don't want to be in a relationship where you're shrinking. You want to be in a relationship where you're expanding, right? So this is the number one, this is the number one thing. If you're entering a relationship and you're feeling, you're, you're entering the relationship from a completeness, you feel whole and complete. You don't need a relationship, but you know, you want a relationship. Your intention is that your life is going to become bigger, right? More expansion, more freedom, more love, right? That's the reason you enter into a relationship. And when you, when you meet this person, you feel those things, you feel more of yourself. You feel like you can take on the world. You feel excited. You feel happy. You feel like they get you. And, um, you're creating a life for yourself where it's both of you kind of not against the world. Let's say you're a team, it's a partnership and both of you together feel very good. Um, you feel good by yourself, you've done your inner work, but you're in a relationship and now you feel even better together. The second function of a relationship is growth. Okay, so this is huge. And oh my God, this is 20 minutes already. So this is huge. Growth, if you're the primary purpose of a relationship is growth. I want you guys to understand that we are not this body. And in my inner work course, the first module is about remembering who you are. So we are not this body, right? We are not this mind. We are not the thoughts. We are not, we are not this vessel, right? We are the awareness inside. We are the awareness, the, the, the consciousness, right? Or the soul. We are the essence. We are not this body, right? And again, when you're in your head and you're in your ego, you're not functioning from your consciousness, your awareness, you're functioning from this like program, which I also get into in the course, you're not functioning from your divinity. So you're entering relationships again for the wrong reason. So the whole purpose of a relationship is the mirror. It's the reflection. It's, I see myself in this person. I can see what my shortfalls are based on how this person is reacting. I see like the growth I've had because I can see how happy this person is. The person you're in a relationship is going to mirror to you, you. <laughs> like, that's it, right? It's the primary purpose of a relationship is to show you the parts of yourself that you like and the parts of yourself that you need continual work on because the other person is going to react to your, um, 
positive attri attributes and the, and the aspects of yourself that you still want to work on. Now, again, this only applies when you move into a relationship from a whole and complete place. Okay. This doesn't apply otherwise, but this is like one of the main functions of a relationship because you want to be able to um, mirror to each other um, your strengths, strengths and your weaknesses. And if it's a conscious relationship, and again, both people are not triggered, but they can communicate about their triggers. There's a very big difference between getting angry. One second, my alarm is going off. Hold on. That was my alarm because I have a client session soon. There is a very big difference between entering relationships from um, a place of like wholeness versus a place of, well, I don't feel good about myself because this won't, this won't apply, right? So when you are whole and complete and you're in a conscious relationship, oh yeah, I know what I was saying. You're in a conscious relationship. You're going to, you're going to be able to communicate about what feels good versus what doesn't feel good without defensiveness, without anger, without um, hostility, right? You're going to be able to communicate in a high value way. When you have not done your inner work, you're not going to be able to do this, right? Because you're going to be taking, you're going to be like reacting from a place of your wounds, right? This is a primary like distinction when we are whole and we've healed versus when we have healing to do is either we don't say anything, so we suppress everything, right? Or when we are communicating, um, when we are communicating how we feel, we're reactive. Or when your partner is communicating something in a nonchalant way, you're becoming reactive, right? So growth is huge. If you are in a relationship and you there's no growth, so you're in a relationship because there's kids, you don't want to leave, blah, blah, blah. These are you're doing yourself a disservice. You're doing your soul a disservice because we're on this planet for a very short amount of time. And the whole reason that we're on this planet is so that our soul, our essence, consciousness can learn the lessons of past lives, of whatever it is that the soul wants to learn. The whole, the whole point of experiences are so the soul can expand. So if you're in a relationship where there's no attraction, you're kind of just going day to, you know, you're doing the day to day things, you know, you're brushing everything under the rug you know, it's just, there's no growth, right? You can't have growth in a relationship if both people are not willing to look at their things. And again, if you're in a relationship with someone for the wrong reasons, there's no growth because you're weak. Like straight up, that's the truth. You don't want to leave the relationship because you are weak. So there's no growth. So even if you think you're doing your inner work, you're not. Because if you're truly doing your inner work, you're not going to be in a relationship with someone for the wrong reasons. The wrong reasons are financial and because you have a child. That's it. So again, a romantic relationship or a conscious relationship, there's going to uh, there's going to be periods of um turmoil. So I'm not saying and suggesting that spiritual relationships are easy because they're not. Because after the expansion period, right? The feeling of, "Oh my god, I've met my person." Um if one person has not done their healing work, right? things are going to come up. If one person has not set boundaries of the past, has not cleared their shit, there's things are going to come up, right? And oftentimes what's going to happen is that person's things are, are going to bring up your things because there's always layers of healing. This is what I've realized that you think you've cleared things and then something else comes and there's more clearing. Like there's always going to be layers of growth, right? Which is the beauty of life, right? No one is ever done. Like there's always more, more, more. And that that's exciting. So as a, as a growth oriented person or a person that is just really here to expand my, expand consciousness, I look at all the ways where I can grow, right? This is why I'm a coach. I'm not a coach um, just regurgitating shit. Like I'm really, I'm very interested in growth. That's my number one thing in life is to expand my consciousness and growth. And if I'm in relationships that don't serve that, and there's no reason for the relationship. I'm not going to entertain the relationship just because I, I, you know, I don't want to be alone. Like that, that, that again, that that is the worst reason. Because if you understand that the whole purpose of why your soul has come here, your soul has come here to learn lessons, and that requires sometimes moving away from relationships, creating boundaries, and doing you know certain things to increase your level of self worth because that's what the soul wants. So if you stay in a relationship and you think my relationship is so great because we have communication and we never fight. 
but you don't have sex with this person. You're not attracted to this person. This person is disgusting to you. They, you know, there's no communication in terms of like, there's no passion. Like that is also a, like a component of a healthy relationship, right? A healthy relationship, although there's going to be, there's going to be difficult periods in a truly healthy spiritual relationship. It's not going to be rosy. It's going to be really good. You're going to really feel like you've met your person, but then people's stuff is going to come up, right? The way back to the relationship is each person individually does their own healing work. That's it. When that happens and the people reunite or the relationship, you know, comes back together, then the relationship is just going to continue to expand. But there are going to be difficult moments in a relationship and that isn't anything to fear, right? Um, a relationship should not feel stagnant. It should not feel boring. It should not feel you should not be in a relationship with someone where you do not feel immense attraction for them. There should be attraction. There should be sexual desire. There should be those things because that's the whole purpose of a romantic relationship. And so if you're not feeling these things with a person and you're with this person for superficial reasons, and really it's because you have low self-esteem, you're really doing your soul a disservice because you can really leave that relationship and eventually meet the person that you're supposed to be with and you know experience a relationship where you do feel expanded you do feel good and you are experiencing growth and again when we look at growth if you are in a relationship with low self-esteem your partner is also in a relationship that has low self-esteem because again we are the reflection of each other in a relationship and and that is point blank how it is if you if you can't leave the relationship because you're insecure that person is also insecure because that person would have left. If a person is not feeling desired in a relationship and they're in the relationship, doesn't matter what the re reason is, it's because there's low self-esteem. Because when you have high self-worth, you are not going to stay in a relationship that doesn't expand how you already feel about yourself. If you already feel love for yourself, good within yourself, you have high self-esteem and you're in a relationship where that is not being mirrored back, there's no way you're going to stay for superficial reasons. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for all the amazing comments. I love hearing from you guys. If you guys have read the books and you have, you know, went through the course, please submit your testimonials. It's also a way of giving back and helping others also follow their intuition, you know, to make these purchases and go deeper within themselves for healing. I love you and I will see you on the next one. Bye.